those are such uh, fantastic songs. Um, you said that, that it, it was an instant chemistry, huh? Yes, you know, between the, the three of us. Right. So I found a way of fitting into bands, almost as a fifth or sixth member. Interesting. Um, because of my success with Bon Jovi, uh, John Claudner, the, the famous John Claudner, John Claudner, um, uh, legendary A&R man, um, you know, asked me if I would go up to Boston and meet Aerosmith. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, I got there. They had never written with an outside writer, and they were not happy to see me. Really? But in, they were, you know, very, you know, in, you know, kind of, uh, going along with it right. to please, to please the, you know, John, sure. uh, Claudner, but they were, they were not that happy about it. And, you know, Stephen was much more friendly, you know, was friendlier as he is. And, uh, you know, was very generous really and showed me a song that they had started called Cruising for the Ladies. Oh. Uh-huh. And, um, I listened to that, uh, lyric and I said, you know what? That's a very boring title. And they looked at me like, how dare you? Uh huh. And um, and then Stephen volunteered uh, sheepishly um, and said that when he first wrote the melody, he started he was singing "Dude Looks Like a Lady." <laughs> it, it, it was kind of a tongue twister that sounded more like scatting. And he got the idea because they had gone to a bar right. and had seen um, a girl at the end of the bar, you know, with big, you know, uh-huh. ginormous rock blonde hair, and uh, the girl turned around and ended up being Vince Neil. Oh, uh, no, Molly really? Crew. Yeah. So then they started making fun of him and started saying, that dude looks like a lady, dude looks like a lady, dude looks like a lady. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's how that was born. That's the true story is how that was born. <laughs> and so I, I grabbed onto that, and I said, no, that's the title of the song. And they looked at me like, are you kidding me? And then Joe, you know, stepped in and said, um, I, I don't want, uh, we, uh, I don't want to insult the, um, gay community. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, I'm gay and I'm not insulted. <laughs> Let's write this song. So I talked them into the whole scenario of a guy that walks into a strip joint and, uh, falls in love with the stripper on stage, goes backstage and finds out it's a guy, but decides that it's, you know, He's going to go with it. Mm-hmm. You know, he says, my funky lady, I like it, like it, like it, like that. Wow. <laughs> and so he doesn't run out of there. He, like, stays. And so it's funny because they use that song in Mrs. Doubtfire. Right. And then it was like every four- or five-year-old child in America was, de- was you know, able to sing that song. <laughs> and it's like, do you realize this is about a tranny? <laughs> Who you're going to love by your lover. 